Diyosis ko, ah. bakit naka, naka uh, parang face mask at nagpaparigada sa streets? Those so, are the times of, uh, of course, I still went to mass because that was uh, required in our family, okay? But my dad would always, uh, medyo, when he would pass me, he would point his finger at me because I would not receive Holy Communion. Okay, so ipokonsyensya niya ako, no? Or any of my brothers, he did also go to, to mass, uh, to, to communion. Eh? And those were, of course, difficult times. And uh, of course, uh, it reached even after I graduated. Uh, my focus was still on Parkada and having the good life. And uh, I was always coming home late because, of course, even though I was working, bawal pa girlfriend, right? So I was had to escape the clutches of my mom. I right? would lock the gate and let loose the dogs no? to hunt me down if I come home late. But I always escaped, no? and I was able to always enter no? through certain tactics which I learned throughout the years. No? But uh, really, you know, and even if I started to work first, I didn't know what to do. I thought I would enter law, but uh, it, I lost any interest when, uh, of course, uh, uh, the Korea administration came in and everything settled down. And I suddenly saw uh, parang political science and politics is not anymore my... Uh, I didn't anymore find any kind of, uh, what we call, attraction towards it. And uh, I remember during those times, so I first worked with... Uh, in our travel agency, right? Of course, once my mom kicked me out because I came home late again. Because as usual, I had a date with my girlfriend, right? And, uh, and I would always, almost every once a week, no, Saturday night, I would come home late, early morning. My other brothers, I was sila precisely because they had cars. Uh, but me, I didn't want to learn how to drive. I only learned how to drive when I was already almost uh, ordained. And uh, so, of course, ako ang palagi na uhuli, right? Uh, because I would have to, uh, how would you call this, go home really, I would reach home very late at night. Right? And those were the times that I was really searching for my life. And I didn't really see myself as uh, close to God in any way. Until, of course, the, devil, the Lord allowed the devil to attack me. Uh, I was at work and I started to enter into the occult and the... Uh, Open my psychic abilities and there will be the new age, you know, Scientology and all these things. And suddenly, poof, for eight months I was under the attack of the devil who would show himself to me and uh, strangle me at night. And uh, it, had, it took eight months before I was totally freed. Uh, but when I was uh, totally freed by that moment, I experienced truly that God was real. And uh, we know that the Lord always searches. As Jesus said to St. Faustina, the more a sinner you are, the more you have a right for my, towards my mercy and compassion. The more I am dead, the more you have a right over my coming to save. Right? Uh, that's why many people, we are afraid of the Lord because our concept is God came to judge us. No? But that is not uh, uh, why Jesus came. He came to save us. And of course, we know he's all, Jesus is always portrayed as a good shepherd with his staff. Well, of course, the staff is to protect the shepherd against the wolves. It is used also when a sheep is straying, uh, straying away or maybe falls, uh, almost about to fall from the edge of the cliff. The hook of the staff is used to hook the neck of the sheep. And it is also the staff is also uh, tall so that the sheep who are small no, can see where the shepherd is going. Uh, but the end, end of the staff is also used as a weapon to... Uh, what to call this, uh, defend against the wolves who attack. Eh? What the Lord did use the crook, he used the edge and hit me on the head. Right? Uh, but it took eight months of uh, suffering, but when I was free, I truly discovered that God was real and that, and that uh, Mama Mary was real because of course the devil was real and because of that, through that experience, God woke me up. He allowed me to wake up through that difficult experience. Right? Because uh, sometimes we have to be aw awakened by more shock tactics or else we will never be able to understand what the Lord may be doing in our lives. No? We can always, we can end up blaming God if we don't understand what is going on. And therefore in today's gospel, the Lord is really telling us no? that first and foremost, when a person goes astray, he becomes a priority for God's love. And therefore, he should never lose hope. No? It is only at the Remember that uh, the difference between St. Peter and Saint, uh, and, and Judas was that one repented, the other, of course, rejected. No? In a sense, uh, 
he was not repentful, no? he, was, he, was, he, was, he just regretted right, what he did. Right? And therefore, it was not based on love. That's why if you remember, St. Peter, when he had denied the Lord, the first thing that the Lord told him, before he said, uh, to follow me, he said, do you still, do you love me? And therefore, we have to remember that the connection that the Lord is asking of us is merely that we fall also in love with Him because He is in love with us. My dear friends, the Lord only searches for us, but we have to allow and always ask for the awareness to know when He is speaking to us. Because many times He will speak in the very ordinary circumstances of life. Now, the difference between us and the saints is that they could discern easily that this very ordinary experience had an extraordinary meaning. And that was the difference with the, between the saints and ordinary Christians. Because a Christian could experience so many experiences, but without that supernatural dimension of faith, it will, in a sense, he will not understand what God is trying to do in his life. And therefore, when something happens in our lives, even a mundane experience, we have to ask ourselves, what is God doing? And what is He asking from me at this moment? Because in all the lives of the saints, every moment was a grace experience, even the most simple experience, because they could see extraordinary depth into God working within the experience, they were able always to respond. And because of that, every experience changed them. Many people can hear thousands of homilies, and uh, read a lot of spiritual books, but why do they, they not change? They can go to Mass every day, like in Kiapo, no? they could, many people go there, but why are they not changed? Precisely because they do not try to look at what the Lord may be doing in their, they do not try to make it, allow the experience to go deeper and see what is the Lord trying to tell them. And therefore, very important for us, if we want to be touched by the Lord, we are first to see that He is touching us in every experience that we have. Because the saints experience the same things that we have. But they had that spiritual insight to always be aware God was touching them. And once you're aware of that, then you respond also. Then we are changed. And therefore, my dear friends, huh? like for example, when we do spiritual reading or read the gospel, if the Lord does, if the gospel does not cause any kind of tension in you, maybe you are just reading it superficially. Right? Because the gospel is the word of God. And therefore, it is good if it causes tension within you, some form of maybe anxiety. Because we see the flesh reacting to the words of Jesus. Once that happens, then you know that actually you are allowing the word to go deeper within you. And the important thing is to not run away and be afraid of what the Lord may be telling you, but to listen carefully. Because there is where holiness lies in. My dear friends, it is therefore very important not only are we, the Lord is asking us, especially during the recollection, He desires to save us. And we, when we have experienced God, right, the best way by which we can show our gratitude is, as St. John Paul II says, we are not merely redeemed by the Lord, we are also co-redeemers. The best way by which we can show that we are grateful to God is that we also insert ourselves in saving souls of others, especially the sinners. Especially the sinners. And remember, uh, in Christmas, uh, when Christmas arrives, the greatest gift and the greatest way we can glorify God is not other than to become a saint. And therefore, during this Mass, let us ask the Lord that every experience, like the saints, we may be able to experience and be aware of the movements of God and how He is, what He is what he's trying, what he's trying to convey to us and allow this word to truly go deep within us. Even though tension may appear or some form of anxiety, listen to it because that is for our salvation. It's not going to be easy. And we may ask certain things that may be difficult, but the grace will always be there. Amen?